Welcome to Lean Building Hangout with Dijon SEO. Um, what we're going to do is uh, start off uh, with uh, the guests in the chat to see if anyone got any specific questions that they would like to ask or discuss. Um, and if not, we will move on to the moderator page and uh, try to answer some of the questions from there. So guys, uh, do you have any questions uh, for me right now? Oh, Dan, I'll go first. Yep, sure. I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, directories. Um, like, uh, there is still a lot of uh, emphasis out there on we will submit your site to directories, and I just think it's a bit of a, it's only a matter of time before they just become redundant. Um, they're purely for, you know, except for the big ones, I consider them to be purely for SEO now. And yeah. I just wondered what your thoughts were as far as uh, promoting clients and content to directories because they just seem like they're just setting themselves up to uh, take a hit. Yeah, it's an interesting one because um, um, just think about it, if you were Google, what would you do? Um, well, first of all, a lot of these directories that have really low barrier to entry, a low, a low barrier to entry, so that basically means that um, anyone can get in for a very low price or no cost at all. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Google, no doubt, have um, good understanding of what those websites are. Um, and I would uh, argue, obviously, I don't work at Google, but from discussions we've had and uh, the feedback we've received, um, and also observing uh, the rankings, it seems like mass, uh, um, you know, submission, directory submission, um, barely has any effect. Um, in the old days, people used to count, you know, the number of uh, unique domains they get links from, a number of unique IP addresses that they get links from. Um, but just like with, uh, you know, you know, not all, not all links are the same. And I think Google has very good methods of determining um, what site is sort of uh, promiscuous in terms of a link, if you know what I mean. Um, you you, bas you basically can get any way you like, um, and they surely factored that in. So whether this type of stuff can cause a penalty or not is uh, arguable. I think if you have a very good website um, with some natural links and if you've done a bunch of directory submissions, I don't, I don't think this will have any impact whatsoever. Um, but if you have a young website and the first thing you've done is, all right, so I just set up my new domain. This is my new website. I'm just going to do some directory submission because I heard it on a forum or I, um, I went to this SEO seminar and some guru told me that that's what I should do. Um, basically, that website would probably not experience any um, significant increase in their rankings. Um, and if anything, if they continue in that direction, um, I, would, I would argue that um, that website could end up uh, in some sort of trouble, uh, tripping some sort of filter with Google, um, especially um, if the type of links that they're generating is using other um, signals like uh, exact match anchor text and other slightly manipulative tactics. So typically, um, directory submission doesn't is not something that can harm, but it's also not something that uh, helps a great deal. I would probably focus on um, actual local directories that matter to your either industry or directories that matter to um, uh, businesses in general. For example, in Australia, we've got a um, a number of uh, fairly uh, um, well-established directories. Um, we've got, uh, you know, your Hot Frog, which is um, an international directory as well, um, and we've got, uh, you know, your True Local and Yellow Pages and whatnot. I think for a, for a small business or for any type of business, it's it's common sense to be listed in those. But going um, that extra length and trying to uh, uh, clock up numbers by directory submissions is absolutely uh, absolute waste of time. I think there are much better uh, ways of building links. In fact, we all know that links are not um, the only uh, search engine signal, and they're sort of losing their power in comparison to what they used to have. Um, so I would I would say that there are much better things to do with your time than um, focus on directory submission. Yeah, um, yeah, no doubt. I, I guess the big thing was. Uh, I don't know if you saw the thing on G Plus uh, a couple of days ago from Darren Rouse about bloggers getting spammed um, with requests. That's yeah. a, that's a good one, and it and it really it really makes you um, 
it really makes you uh, uh, think um, about what we as SEOs are actually doing for the yeah. internet. Um, if you know, it used to be uh, your normal spam, you know, buy Viagra and payday loans and whatever, uh, those type of emails. Now bloggers are overwhelmed with, oh, hi, I really like your blog. Um, and in fact, you haven't even read it. You, you don't understand the person you're contacting. Um, I, think, I think he makes a really good point, and that's a big, huge wake-up call for all people in, who are engaged in link building um, and in SEO in general is not to spam people. And if you, if you do things, don't, you can't do it on mass scale. Um, I think there was a recent post on scaling, scaling link building, and that's a lot, of, a lot of people are wondering how you can do this. But arguably, um, link building process of outreach is something you can't really um, uh, scale effectively. You can scale things like uh, the way you um, organize yourself and manage your activities and, uh, and uh, coordinate your team. Um, but if, you, if you're on somebody's blog and you're not actually reading it, you don't know who this person is, you can cause an enormous amount of trouble um, for, for your client. And yes. uh, or yourself, if you're working, if you're working in-house. Um, more specifically, there's there was uh, there's some issues that we had in our own team, and I'm going to tell you what happened. Um, there was this uh, this technology blogger, pretty well established in Australia, and one of my guys approached him uh, quite casually, and you know, hey, uh, can we? Uh, there's a little, a little bit of a story, and can we get a link? And it was for an insurance company, um, and he goes, oh, "I know what you're up to. You know, you're just trying to score a link. You don't really care." Ah, oh, he made a big deal out of it, um, and we had a discussion about this. And we said, "Well, why did you like? You don't even know who this guy is. He's criticized this type of activity in the past. Have you not read his blog?" No, I'm I'm uh, rushed. I have deadlines. You know, I gotta you know um, because back then uh, we strictly uh, sort of um, complied with the requests of our clients. I want this many links. You know, nowadays it's a little bit, it's a little bit silly. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pay X amount of money, and you're going to give me Y amount of links. So each month we're going to pr produce 30 links, and that's what you're paying us for. That's such a wrong way to look at um, SEO in general and, and link building, um, and and we need to sort of shift away from that because one link can be more than hundred links. Um, in essence, basically, if you compare hundred links from cheap directory submissions and one actual n normal uh, link, I would swap them many times. I would uh, settle oh. for one link. Well, the crappy ones are probably more dangerous. <laughs> in, in fact, um, they can cause yeah. some some risk. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I think I think uh, everyone should read that. Uh, if somebody can uh, uh, find that article or that Google Plus post, uh, I would appreciate if you can. Uh, Push, push it through the uh, comments in the Hangout um, post. Uh, that yeah. would be really good so people know what we're talking about. Okay, Priyal um, Parikh says it's packed, and um, I might need to post our Hangout page. All right, so people can actually uh, see it. Did I post it in the chat here? Of course, we don't need it, but... Um, if you if you know anyone anyone who's trying to join in, but they can't, then feel free to send them that link that I just put in the in the chat. Okay, any more questions from the chat? All good. Ah, uh, Martin has a question. He's going to have to type it up though. Ah, see see above. Okay, already. Is there a maximum amount of people can join? Oh, this is related to the Hangout. Yeah, I could only... S sorry, Richard, I just muted you. I thought you were just typing frantically about something else. <laughs> um, That's Richard, all right. Yeah. Um, I could only join because someone else left, and I, I was like spamming the rejoin button for a minute <laughs> because I, I, was sorry, another, I was in another Google+, Plus, um, and there was like seven people and they're waiting and then all of a sudden uh, Luke my colleague said oh it's in a different one so there's probably and I told everyone just before I came here hey everyone it's moved so 
there's probably at least 10 people trying to join. Yeah, we're, um, we're actually uh, attempting to handle that issue um, by repointing people to this one, although it's, uh, uh, it's already uh, filled up. Um, yeah. for, the, for those who don't have um, any specific questions, um, if, you, if you're satisfied with just watching the Hangout, you can always click the link um, that I just pasted before and watch the Hangout as well if you, if you don't want to participate in the discussion. Okay, so uh, Martin says, does it reduce your blog's link power by leaving the spammer links intact and not deleting them? Do you mean um, if you have like a blog post and people comment on it with various uh, keywords and in, in links and so forth? Ah, okay. Um, basically, if these links are all uh, handled through nofollow, which I'm guessing most of the blogs um, handle that, then this will not um, harm your website in any way. Uh, the only thing I can think of, because basically links that are nofollow, um, they are not part of the link graph. Google does not do anything with them in terms of link signals. Um, but one thing you have to worry about is that if you have a page, um, a page of uh, content and it's like a short paragraph and then <clears throat> 10,000 comments below that and they're all talking about XXX and Viagra and uh, you know various other forms of spam, then you might actually have a problem with the topical dilution of the page. Um, I'm not sure if Google's clever enough yet to handle every type of comment to understand, okay, this is the actual content and this is the comments. Uh, but I would, not just for the sake of SEO, I would uh, moderate that page and just clean it up because it's just plain embarrassing. But in terms of um, links, <clears throat> there's absolutely no harm. Cool. All right, um, any more questions from the chat? Otherwise, we're going to jump into the moderator. Okay, Jim asks, what is your view on site-wide links, assuming that the site uh, providing the link has provided with no ulterior motive? There's nothing wrong with site-wide links. I never, I never um, heard Google saying site-wide site -wide links are bad, uh, or other search engines for that matter. Um, it's, it's, sorry to interrupt there, but it's, it's a big topic in the Webmaster Help Forum. Uh, um, the, it, it's being used by many of the people giving advice there, and uh, I agree with you. But um, yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll go back and tell them that Dan told me. <laughs> um, look, we just have to think about what happens, what occurs naturally around the web. Um, SEO is only a small, f you know. SEO has small, relatively small impact on the web. Um, and we have to consider um, other instances that occur of site-wide linking. And they were there before Google. They are totally legitimate. Now, where the problems arise is when you start manipulating anchor text of the site-wide link and setting it to a particular keyword. Um, and if you start noticing that there are a lot of unrelated links site-wide, um, say, for example, uh, somebody asked about blog roles. Um, if you have a blog role, you're about, you, you're talking about, your blog's about turtles, and you link out to blog roles, you know, about people talking about um, fish, fishing, fishing and, uh, you know, marine life and, you know, what else, whatever, maybe pets. Um, that, that's perhaps acceptable, um, but if you start linking out to SEO companies and um, insurance companies and whatnot, that's when site-wide links start to raise flags with Google. Um, and if, if I was part of the uh, Google's uh, web spam team and if I arrived on a blog which has manipulative anchor text and site-wide links and linking to different unrelated links, it would be uh, black and white for me. I would see that that's, that's a manipulative attempt. Um, yeah, I don't know, like, I think that's just common sense. Um, okay. So let's see what questions we have on the moderated page. I think there was a few interesting ones in there, so just bear with me for a sec. So the top question by popularity was by SEO Techie from Manila, Philippines. What is the most effective link building method for that the Jean SEO used to its clients and can tell everybody that hey it worked? 
That's interesting. It's a really interesting question. I, I, I like being challenged like that with it because um, when you build links for different clients, you use different methods. So um, if you have a tourism-related uh, client, you build links differently to when you have financial services client or if you have um, an e-commerce store because opportunities for links are wildly different. They, they vary so um, so much that there is no uh, right or wrong. But I don't want to leave it as as empty as that. Um, I'll I'll say that currently popular link building method among my team, it's not something I control. Um, I have I, know, I typically have a vision and I and I give my guys option, but everyone everyone's sort of going nuts over um, guest blogging, and guest blogging is one of the I would say very popular link building method. It seems legitimate, but we have to put a little asterisk sign on it because I think guest blogging is going to become and is and has become the new link exchange. And we have to really worry about um, uh, guest blogging in terms of um, moderation, editorial content, quality, um, and whether you know there's been a sort of a monetary exchange uh, in return for the for the link. So typically, I think Google and other search engines don't really have a problem for as long as we do things um, organically. And well, we're not supposed to link build to start with, but you know, you can you can argue that uh, uh, guest blogging is is a marketing effort anyway. Um, so, for example, if you're link building through guest blogging. Um, I think you should write normal stuff. Uh, you should tell stories, not really write promotional articles. You should not really stuff your article, um, your post with anchor text. You should link, the link should appear where, sh where links should appear uh, through editorial context, not just because you want to get that link. And link out generously to other content that's useful to others. I would avoid, when guest blogging, I would avoid uh, Doing um, you know things like deals, I'll guess I'll send a guest post for you, and you do one for me. So it's kind of like, even though it's very, it's going to be very hard for uh, search engines to catch up with that sort of type of arrangement. <clears throat> Where I would get really worried is once you start automating this process, right? There are places out there that have been running for a while. Um, what is it, my guest blog or something like that, and you know where people start to sort of get a bit more organized. So if you have an army of people churning out guest, guest posts um, and uh, doing things like that and you automated it suddenly, <clears throat> that's where you sort of opening up a bit of a Pandora's box as far, as far as that's concerned. My other favorite link building method is by leveraging brands. Um, and that's why it's so important to actually not just obsess and work on your SEO but also think about am I a good business, am I a good brand, am I recognizable? If people see my logo, will they re remember it? Will they recognize it next time? Um, and of course, we know that branding is not just about uh, you know uh, a logo that you have on your shirt. It's it branding is is about what you do and how you interact with customers and the quality of your product and the culture about the company and everything else. Why I'm talking about this is because um, there are many many ways that you can leverage of the power of your brand once you once you have it developed um, to gain links in in very different uh, many different ways. I'll show you one example. Um, so I'm just going to flip over to um, my screen here and share it with you. Okay. Hopefully that's coming up uh, nice and clear. Okay. So on this website, um, this is one of staff. So we've done SEO, and there's a and there's a page that talks about what we've done. Um, so here is the um, uh, the logo. So what what I've done, I've developed the um, uh, images that were used on various other website websites. Okay, so here you can you can even do uh, things like uh, more sizes. It didn't work in this case, but it it often can. So here you're discovering your link opportunities. Okay, so these guys used our logo, but the question you're asking yourself, have they linked to us? <clears throat> so in this case, we're discovering a relationship. So 
Australian Technology Park is where our Sydney office is located. And they've used our um, logo to link. Obviously, um, we have organized for this website. Oh, this is another tip. When you're, when you're finding your, your logo everywhere uh, on the web and you're wondering, can I get a link here? I think a, a better better way to get link from the logo is not just not just to link it to your website, but especially if you're on a page like with many logos like that. If each one of these was linking out to its own website, um, you know that page would be linking out to many many other pages. You'd be getting a relatively uh, small uh, fraction of that uh, page's link equity. So what what we like to do is create a separate page dedicated to our business that talks about us and then links to it to our website. Note that we didn't actually use um, SEO or um, search engine optimization, anything like that. We used just our URL to link through. Um, Google and search engines, they're smart enough to figure out, yes, okay, there's some SEO context in this. Um, now, interestingly, I had a discussion or a, uh, I asked Google a question about Okay, so we know that we can put SEO in this page that you just seen. Google knows that we can put SEO because why am I pretending? Uh, why am I dumbing down my anchor text just to be safe? And the answer I got was basically if you have a profile, if you have, say, your Google Plus profile and you're de-optimizing your own anchor text just because you, don't, you want to be safe, uh, the answer I got uh, was we wouldn't worry about, you know, if you put exact match tech, anchor text you want to rank for, if you put it in your personal profile or, you know, like legitimate pages like that, that's completely fine. Once you start doing, you know, more manipulative stuff, uh, paid links, sponsored, you know, um, uh, article networks and things like that, and you use exact match anchor text, that's when it can hit you. Um, so even with Penguin, things like this, if you, if you have a legitimate page and a legitimate business, I don't think you should worry too much about um, that anchor text because now you know that if you if you use exact match anchor text, that'll help you more than something else. <clears throat> Though um, arguably we left it like this, um, and it does it does carry its normal value. So what we've done here is we basically um, utilize our logo, reverse image search to find to find link opportunities. But this is not exactly what I meant by uh, by brand. Some, when you have a big brand, you can do um, other things. Or not even a big brand. I think uh, Richard is one of those people who he's not a huge brand but he's, he's a brand, right? He's created a brand. Um, and it's a totally different experience once you start approaching and contacting people um, for cross-promotion interaction um, whether they've heard about you before or not. Makes, makes a significant difference. Um, so to illustrate, um, take, a, take for example um, uh, a, a big travel brand, right? Big travel brand, a big travel agent uh, wanting to uh, uh, earn more links. What what can they do? For example, they can um, have a blog section on their uh, website saying uh, small uh, business of the week. And they can feature a camper van business or a, a tour uh, guide or whatever. And they feature this business on their blog and then they tell them about it. Say, for example, if you if you were if you're a small business operator and you appear on, on a huge tr travel uh, website, be proud of that, wouldn't you? And um, you would link to it and share it in Twitter and uh, Facebook and Google Plus if you can, and uh, likely will create that link. You can even go a step further and you can give them a little a little badge saying, as featured on such and such uh, travel website. Um, just don't try not to make widget bait, right? Uh, things like because that's that's sort of uh, going into the risky zone. Uh, what I mean by that is like uh, spreading widgets out and little uh, logos and badges, but manipulating anchor text and creating something that will actually uh, uh, help you rank better. So I think if you if you sort of draw the line there, I think you'll be uh, you'll be quite safe. So those are two examples of um, how you can uh, you know leverage brand to to earn links. And there's, there's many other um, cases. I can talk about this a lot more, but I think we should probably go through a few more questions. There's a really massive article coming up where I'm talking about uh, leveraging brand power 
um, to earn links with some really, really interesting tips. Cool. Um, any more questions from the uh, chat, or shall we go to the next one in the moderator? Moderator it is. Okay. How many types of link building? What is the best type of link building? That's kind of similar, isn't it? Um, my, my preference would be on relationship-based link building. Relationship-based link building is basically um, a broad area, but it involves examining as a first step. Kind of like the first question I had, should I be submitting to directories? You know, should I bother? Not really. If you're an established business, you've been running for a year, two, or five years, or ten years, the likelihood of you being connected in the business world is very high. So you'll probably have suppliers, you'll have web design companies doing work for you, uh, somebody designed your logo. So I think the best way to build links is to think about how you're connected in the business world, examining those relationships, creating yourself a list, um, and going through that list in some, some order of uh, priority, perhaps sorted by MozRank or Domain Authority or some other um, metric that you can use. Um, or if you, if you can think about your own personal relationships, I am a um, um, Griffith University alumnus, for example, and I do each year I do some uh, at least two or three lectures to students. For me, it's um, completely reasonable to contact the university and uh, you know arrange some sort of page about me or um, uh, organize that link from there. That would be my first priority. Or perhaps if I've done something with uh, uh, government, uh, held a presentation or seminar, helping small business get ahead online, um, that would be the line of thinking that I would take. So. The best type of link building is creating reasonable links that can um, um, last over time, not something that is a quick scheme that's going to fizzle out or even cause you a penalty later on. So my focus would be towards uh, relationship-based link building. That's definitely uh, um, the best type of link building you can do. I said that guest blogging is most popular currently among my link builders, uh, but I'm monitoring that process very strictly. Um, but the best, in my opinion, uh, link building is through your relationships and connections in the business world. Okay, third question. Using Xenu to find broken links on other websites related to your site and then contacting their webmasters to offer a solution. Have you used this tactic with success? Yes, I have. Um, except I have not used Xenu. Um, as you probably know, we've got a, um, uh, a team of developers here at Dijan SEO. Um, and we write all sorts of wonderful tools. Um, but a little bit like Google, we have a rule of, you know, don't be evil. Um, if, you, if you're about to do something, you got to ask yourself, is this damaging the web? Is this doing something naughty? You know, and that's, that's kind of a guideline where we, uh, where we um, try to moderate ourselves. To give you one example, um, for a very long time, uh, one of the SEO companies was uh, um, ahead of us, you know. And we were trying to, you know, we were a very small SEO company at the time. We were trying to creep up to them, and, you know, we could never um, get there. And what I did is um, I wrote a bot that um, scanned their website and found any broken links. And then, based on the broken links, I would then scan to see if any of those broken links are um, either domains that are misspelled or domains that don't exist anymore. So um, what I did then is I found one link. It was a pretty good link from my competitor's website. I registered the domain and then 301 it back to our site. We had such a good laugh in the office about this. Um, but I don't think we, we, we do this anymore. It was a good, good laugh. And um, whether you want to build links that way do you really want to have 100 links or 1,000 links uh, that were created in that way? Probably not, uh, because the, the uh, sacrifice you're making is too great to justify the benefit. Did I just give somebody ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> what was the uh, competitor? Uh, it was um, guys from eWeb Marketing. Uh. They could, they could probably laugh at this uh, w watching it. I'm going to tell, I'm probably going to find the link and tell them which, which page is a broken link. <laughs> no, I like those guys. We're quite, we're quite friendly. There's oh, no good. Link. That's uh, all right. Then. We just did it for the laughs. 
Um, okay, any more questions from the, uh, from the chat? Or shall we move to the next one in the moderator? Okay, Martin is asking a question. He's typing, so I'm going to try to answer one in, in the meantime. Luke Chapman asks, what are your thoughts on social link building? Facebook, Twitter, G+, Instagram, Pinterest, etc. Worthwhile <clears throat> efforts better spent elsewhere. It's a really good one. I like to combine. I, I don't really make distinction between link building and social activities. Um, to me, it's a little bit of a blur. It's, it's, all, it's all the same. So let's call it just online marketing. Um, how, you know, because two things work hand in hand. If you if you've just uh, written a post on your blog uh, or some, on somebody else's blog, you're sharing that through um, social media. People are reacting to that. If the content is good, uh, that's going to get uh, links and social shares. Um, <clears throat> the other way around, if you, um, if you engage with people on social media platforms, that can result in links um, as well. But going back to relationships again, what are, what are links? Links are connections between web pages, but Google treats them as endorsements, as, as uh, little votes. So in a sense, links are a sign of relationships between two pages or two domains or two websites. So social media is great for building relationships, and relationships are great for building links. So if you, uh, if you, if you dis, uh, sort of separate the two, I don't think uh, you, you're looking at, uh, at the whole thing the right way. So I'm a big fan of um, social media. I'm a big um, advocate of Google+. Plus. I really enjoy the platform. Um, <clears throat> I use Facebook on the um, a fraction of my time. Uh, Twitter a little bit more than Facebook. I spend the majority of my time on Google+. Plus. Instagram I don't touch, and Pinterest I don't touch. Uh, also, it's my personal choice. Um, I, I spend my time where I'm comfortable. Um, so I, I hope that answers your question. Um, but in terms of like crude value, should I get thousand shares or should I de get thousand links? I think I would get thousand links still, right? <laughs> Depends. Uh, I guess if if again if they're from uh, crappy directories, I wouldn't. Um, likewise, if you buy thousand tweets or if you buy thousand pluses, I wouldn't want to, anything to do with that as well. Um, so thoughts on social link building? Fantastic. I, I love it. Um, I think that's the way to um, do things. Um, emails a little bit, you know. My inbox is, you know, chockers. I, the other day I was celebrating when I brought my inbox to zero. The last thing you want to see in your inbox is an, yet another link building, link, uh, link request for some, some, from somebody. I just delete those. I don't read them. I can scan them in a fraction of a second. 0 0.5 of a second. I can see if something is a, um, I don't even have to open it. I can, I can just read the title. Uh, of the email, I can delete it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Martin had a question. Does Google understand different language? For example, my wife speaks Chinese and has written some articles about my business um, acquiring product in Chinese with links to my site. Would Google treat as a similar content to my site even though it's in another language? Um, yeah, Google handles languages uh, uh, pretty well. Although, I would argue that Google doesn't really understand languages. Google um, indexes a page and indexes elements of a page. They'll dissect and disseminate the page into title, header elements, uh, title headings, paragraphs of text. They'll extract links. So it's all a little bit like bits and pieces. They pull it apart, um, and they uh, and that's that's fragmented, I guess, in the in the index. I guess you can see the page in cache as a whole. Um, but I think Google's not truly a semantic uh, search engine just yet. Um, so they look at you know keywords and proximity of keywords and other uh, signals. Um, so I would I would say that their understanding of the topic and keywords is pretty good. Um, but um, I'm not sure uh, what you're trying to um, say in terms of value. Like, are you worried about content duplication or because I think it's perfectly normal to have a translated or different version of pages in different language. Um, okay, Jim has a question or a comment. This site initially attracted quality links like EDU, etc., but I noticed a few new links on from tattoo shops, etc., recently. <clears throat> this is a complex question, but do you think it would be plus or minus to attach a link 
to the plain text tagline. What do you mean by that, um, uh, Jim? Are you actually in the chat? No. Yeah, I am. Uh, oh, you are. It's uh, yeah. It's it's sort of a, a bad neighbourhood question, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. at, at the bottom of the page, we say that this uh, site is provided by ShopSafe Online Shopping, but it's plain text. It's it's not a link, and uh, I know, know from. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry. Hang on. You're talking about your website, actually. It's one of ours here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I noticed we, we, we talked the other day about um, a plain text uh, uh, message and, and I think John Mu uh, gave you the, the clear clear answer that a, a plain text listing of a URL on a page is not regarded as a link. No, yeah. Um, but at the bottom of our page, I, I have uh, the, the, on this site, uh, I have this page, uh, um, this page is provided by ShopSafe Online Shopping. I'm just wondering whether it's plus or minus. It's just really a bad neighbourhood question. Whether it's plus or minus to to um, link from this site, uh, um, given that uh, many of the links are what Google would possibly regard as as, as low quality. Yeah, is this a site-wide link? Yeah, and it's linking to an unrelated um, <clears throat> sort of uh, page. Well, it's, it's, it's a page, a public service page that we've provided ourselves. Uh, um, the people link to it because they find it useful. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this is a problem, to be honest. Um, but have you considered um, providing some sort of uh, disclosure about this? Um, and what, how, would, how, would you, how would you go about that? Um, for, for example, I've done, I've done this several times uh, already, where you have a, a website and um, they link out to their sister companies and so forth. I think it's a good practice to explain why you're linking out, like maybe create a page that explains the nature of the relationship, what, what is the deal here. Um, so for example, if you own five other companies and you just want to interlink them, so in order not to look too spammy, I think uh, I remember Google saying it's a good practice to provide a disclosure page where somebody from Google's web spam team can go and read read up and go, what's going on here? I see a lot of uh, different links coming out of here. So if they can actually read, oh, okay, Dan also owns four other companies and this is his other businesses, he's just promoting it, yep, that's cool. Um, though I, I wouldn't be too sure about using exact match anchor text. I would probably link it through the brand or the URL just to be safe. Okay, thanks, Dan. Yeah, um, it's and you've never done that. You've never sort of uh, provided like a, a an explanation or disclosure anywhere, anywhere on, your, on your websites. Um, if you've got time later on, if you could just have a look at the, the, the URL, it's, okay. it's hard to explain it. it, okay. it, it, it because of, it, it, I said it was complex because uh, um, we, we we market products and uh, this is um, um, a. a a utility to explain how, how to uh, um, zip files, which other sites, uh, when they're telling people zip this up and send it to us, can just link to and uh, explain how, how to do it. Yep. Okay. I'll, I'd love to have a look at it later on. Okay. Um, Thanks, man. Yep. So what is the next? I think Martin Jackson added, um, it's not copied content, it's unique but would it be considered a related subject rather than some random site? <clears throat> no, it would be considered uh, um, a similar topic or same topic because they do, Google Translate works pretty well, so I think they do have um, connections between different keywords and topics um, across. But it will be an interesting question to ask Google as well. Maybe we ask them in the next Hangout on Friday uh, whether they understand the topic of two different uh, language pages, which I'm guessing they do. Um, <clears throat> do you see any, Dale and Nas, did you see any benefit from the Belgium site that tra translated your article the other week? Um, why not? Yeah. I, I mean, I really liked it. Um, I, I found somebody, um, for those who are not familiar, um, was it Belgium website, Dale, or was it something else? Oh, I'm, I'm guessing. I thought it was Belgium. Insert country here. I think yeah. it was. Uh, I think it was Portugal. Portugal. Maybe, maybe Brazil. I'm, it's hard to <laughs> say. But um, um, <clears throat> basically, they translated my um, article word for word, and they provided this link to the uh, uh, 
original source. That's fantastic. That type of links, I would love to see more. Um, and is that, Ivan, is that penalized? Is that penalized as duplicate content, even though it's in another country, in another language? No, that's. I think that's perfectly normal for for a, a translation of an article to exist elsewhere on the web is a perfectly normal um, occurrence. Um, now you may start seeing some light bulbs lighting up. Um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. If I <clears throat> translate the articles, I can score links. That that's been done and tried already. So basically, there was this uh, link building company that would contact um, research organizations and uh, academics, and they would offer to translate their uh, research paper into Polish or Ukrainian or Serbian or whatever, Macedonian. Um, I really don't know how relevant would be a translation of my research paper in Macedonian, but um, I guess some academics took it up as an offer. And later on, the translate, uh, translation company was asking um, uh, the academic to link back uh, to that where that page is hosted. So they would host the translation on their site. So kind of like almost twisting their arm. Come on, link it, you know, a bit aggressive. Um, and somebody figured it out, and they wrote a post um, outing these people, saying they're just trying to scam us. Actually, I received a chain email from academic circles um, uh, warning people, these evil SEOs, that's all they're trying to do. So academics are now aware and scholars are now aware what we're trying to do. So you can't, if you want to get a link from somebody legitimate like a library or a research paper, you have to put in a little bit of work. You can't just scam them for it. Um, and I thought that's sort of, it's clever. I would I would consider doing something like that, but these guys were automating it, you know, mass. A lot of people doing the same thing, just churning it, and they weren't actually helping. They weren't actually helping the web. They were linking those articles to their clients and to the some hosting company or the main company. I can't remember exactly what happened. So this is sort of like where where you would want to draw the line and sort of not not go there. Yeah. Um, there's a fa funny, sorry, apologies for interrupting, damn it, there's a yeah. funny example of that uh, on the Webmaster Help Forum, the, uh, a company that uh, um, did a, a Korean translation of, of Wikipedia and that they were complaining on the Webmaster Help Forum that, that it wouldn't rank. <laughs> um, were they expecting to rank for, for everything that Wikipedia ranks for? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't, I mean... Honestly, I don't think any, there's anything wrong with translating um, Wikipedia in another language, but if you if you have sort of uh, different motives and you sort of try to slip in some commercial links, and that's sort of where where it gets a little bit risky. Um, okay, uh, let's see the next question. Is a link in an English article going to be better than written in Chinese? Um, I think if you get a link from Chinese website, it might actually it might actually help you rank for uh, Chinese language. Not sure about the Chinese uh, actual location, but I, I think it would actually give some context, some surroundings. So when somebody searches in Mandarin, um, perhaps you would actually uh, potentially uh, come up as a result uh, for that geo region, wherever you are, wherever your website is. Um, so a link. Um, is going to be valued the same on one level, like sort of crude page rank and you know the, the link equity. But then context of it might leaning more towards the uh, uh, say Mandarin uh, search queries. Um, Yakita asks, how should link building be done for big e-commerce websites? Um, I actually wrote a, quite an elaborate article um, on this. I'm going to try to find it now. We've got music playing somewhere. I'm going to have to mute you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. All right. Here's the, um, here's the article here. So if you, um, I think you can just search for e-commerce SEO. In Australia, we come up first, but maybe if you're um, in a different region, uh, just search for design SEO, e-commerce SEO, or something like that, and you'll find the article. Um, 
<laughs> okay, so basically, link building for big e-commerce website is a, is a complex task. We've done this in the past, and it's been a bit of a challenge, but there's a huge amount of opportunities there as well. Um, one thing I would highlight, though, is that before you decide um, you're going to be link building, maybe set your priorities and your targets right. Because if you have a big e-commerce website with 100,000 products, or even 1,000 products, um, you know, you, you should probably ask yourself, what's, my, what's the most important thing and most important area where I should be focusing on? So I think link building is more, uh, for large websites, an e-commerce website is more um, about getting organized. Now, one specific example I have uh, where link building can uh, work quite well is, um, let's say you have a page um, that, actually, I'm going to actually send you a screen share so you know what I'm talking about, okay? <clears throat> so here's a it's white, fits on a certain car, you know, how do you get links for this page? Well, <clears throat> arguably what you can do is um, create a competition and you give away a few of these products. You can market it via social media, maybe uh, uh, through a forum as a giveaway. <clears throat> Just make sure you're perhaps established in that particular forum rather than spamming them. Um, announce the competition, uh, but don't create a separate competition page. Create a competition page content as, as a separate fourth tab in this uh, page layout and uh, publish the rules there and say I'm giving out 10 of these seats to the first 10, you know, to the first few people who will actually re reply or do something or write about it, it doesn't matter, some, some form of engagement. And then when you're finished with that, you can then <clears throat> pop up a new tab and announce the results by listing the winners on that uh, fifth or fourth tab. What this means is that they can, um, and of course when you do this you want to make sure it's a it's a hash um, and then winners. So if you have a URL, I think I provide an example here. There we go. I'm gonna enlarge my font so you guys can see it a bit clearer. So that's how a URL could look like. So you link to your product URL and you have the hash winners at the end and you give this to people to tell them that they won. Um, and you'll see s s sort of uh, natural uh, sharing and you know either through social or blogs um, of people who actually uh, either participated or won uh, the product. And of course, <clears throat> big one um, with e-commerce stores is, the, is to leverage the post-purchase uh, post excitement. We're very enthusiastic when I bought my uh, um, Nexus uh, tablet. I was very excited about that um, and I was quite disappointed how anticlimactic the checkout page was. I wanted the fireworks and balloons and I wanted to tell everyone, I wanted to plus some, push some button. I was like, oh, pumped. Yeah, I'm getting my tablet. Um, and there was nothing on that page. I even, I even uh, took a screenshot and published and I think the Nexus people are saying, you could have done much better with this. So at the end of the checkout process, you can say, um, tell your friends you just bought this, um, or copy, copy paste this code, put it in your blog, announce that you just bought this product. Tell us what you think, come back, tell us what you think once you've tried it. Um, how was your ex you know, buying experience and so forth? Um, because this, uh, it, at, throughout the funnel, throughout the sales funnel, you don't want anything to get in the way of conversion. But once you're at the end of it, um, if you're just greeted with a thank you page and nothing else, it feels a little bit uh, bland. So one of my favorite methods of getting links uh, for big e-commerce sites is to have links happen on their own. That way you don't have to do anything. I hope that helps. Um, okay, so Richard asks, would you link site-wide directly to the sister sites or link to an internal page about the sister sites? Okay, no. um, I would do both. Um, again, if you... if the, if the sister site is a little bit different topically, again, some form of disclosure explaining the nature of that relationship that would be, that would be useful. Um, but in addition to that, uh, in addition to that site-wide link, I would um, create a promotional page about my other website <clears throat> on my main site. Um, you know, 
uh, I don't know, a few paragraphs of text and contextually link to that site or to the key page that you want uh, want to rank. That would be really smart because you're not on, only getting the, just the raw page rank, but you're also getting that editorial value. So definitely do both. Thank you. Okay, Ivan asks, is there a way to discover malware-infected sites? Yes, uh, let me read further. Um, in some TLD, country-specific, <clears throat> we are all aware that malware hurts. Sites brands a lot in terms of temporary Google penalty and probably affects in general. Linking sites is a bad neighborhood. It's a challenge to find such businesses more easily and offer them ongoing SEO care. Search for Viagra. I think that's uh, that's a pretty good. I mean, <clears throat> if you own the site, you can just go to Google Webmasters Tools. Voila, you've discovered um, you've discovered uh, the problem. But um, let, let's try. Let's try. Let's let's go buy some Viagra. Here's a search I did earlier. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's in my search history. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Memorymap.com.au, Viagra. Okay. <clears throat> I'm thinking uh, these are all legitimate Viagra websites. It's, it's, it sounds so wrong saying legitimate and Viagra at the same time. Um, ah, okay. So, see, I just found one. So memorymap.com.au I would imagine would be a legitimate website. I'm so sorry guys for memory map. This is probably embarrassing because everyone's, everyone can see this. Um, but arguably this will help you clean up as well. Maybe can, somebody can ping these guys and get them to fix up the problem. Um, because they rank second for Viagra in Australia, that is pretty bad. Um, Okay, so um, another tip. By the way, I probably wouldn't go and find damaged websites and offer them SEO services. That's they're probably not going to trust you anyway. Um, I think that's a strange way to get business. But while we're on topic, I would probably go um, Viagra site um, orgau. Yep. Um, so we're seeing all these hacked websites which have uh, Viagra. Sometimes you can't see it on the page itself, um, but you can actually see it in the source code. But if it's not in the source code, most likely you'll be able to see it in the cached version of the page. So if you go uh, if you go view the cache of the page and because they serve different page to Google, the cloaking, to what they show to the normal um, user. Okay. So we've done some interest we've done some interesting Viagra searches. That's uh, unexpected but uh, fun, I guess. Um, okay, have you had Dalen asked, have you had any experience link building for content to rank in Baidu? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, that's probably a question for um, Wang Feng if he's in the chat at the moment. Yes, he is. Um, Can I share my story with that? Please, please, Richard. We um we hired a Chinese computer programmer, and uh, we just said ah, and he's really really committed. And he said, uh, should we do a Chinese page? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? And so he he made us a Chinese page. I'll um, put on the URL in a sec. And um, he just translated the page for us. And I just when you I saw you ask that question, and I know that it hadn't ranked for a while, but here's the um, the translation. And I've never actually checked until you asked this, and it's now ranking on position three for our keyword in Baidu. There's two two links there. First one's the actual page, the second one's the Baidu search result for compare car rental, 
which is the in Chinese. So I yeah, can see it second position. Yeah, and we did a couple of little links to it with the Chinese. I'm not sure from where, but they were probably just cheap and nasty ones. We just didn't <laughs> think they needed much. It might have just been an internal link even for the Chinese spelling. And um, yeah, it's now ranking position three. And he has he also noticed that we're on a lot of Chinese discussion forums um, for travel. So that's nice. Yeah, we're very excited about that. Yeah, yeah that's really cool. Um, mm. I know from speaking to um, Wang is that uh, uh, his opinion is that there's a lot of um, spam happening in, in, in Chinese um, oh. SEO, so it's all um, it's all funny games. Um, so I would imagine <clears throat> it would be a fairly um, easy uh, uh, challenge in comparison to um, Australia, or United States, or you know United Kingdom, but. Um, I haven't tried, so I can't really say. Um, be really interesting to see. Uh, um, if so, you're saying you just translated that one page, and you didn't translate much more of the content. That we just did our homepage, and there's not even that much content there to translate. And um, yeah, it, this was about 12 months ago, and we probably did two hours of work on it, including the few links that we linked to it and uh, yeah I just tested it again now and it's on there. Um, I noticed you're not using the uh, um, alternative H uh, href link. Um, that could probably um, help but I mean you're already ranking pretty well but in, like specifically for Google. Um, what's, what's the alternate H? Um, I'll I'll find uh, some information right now and I'll paste it um, in the forum. Okay. So basically, if you have a if you have a website with uh, several different uh, uh, language uh, pages, here's the link in the. Uh, oh, gotcha. Chat. Um, by the way, if anyone uh, if if anyone wants to share this uh, on Google Plus, uh, I'd appreciate that. Uh, those who are participating in the chat, so others who are just watching on uh, on YouTube can see it as well. Um, so basically, I think I've seen it with uh, I think it was Mastercard or um, that had it uh, set up uh, pretty well. I see. Yeah, we didn't even worry about stuff like that. Um, it was the keyword that we wanted it to rank for, and I just yeah, yeah, yeah it was just interesting. Good question okay. though. Yeah, um, maybe American Express. I think and it was the, that uh, one. Yep. The um the programmer we also asked him about the the people in China. What do they do? And he said most people use Baidu, but he said smart people like me use Google. Because <laughs> they know how to use it. Proxies. Like yeah. 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 But otherwise, everyone uses Baidu. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I I just uh, found the uh, the URL. So if you just uh, go to AmericanExpress.com, you will notice on their website or even the forward slash Australia. Um, if you view the source code of this page, um, actually, it might be simpler if I actually just share my desktop. Okay, so you will notice that AmericanExpress.com has a redirect from their homepage to um, to uh, Australia for uh, forward slash Australia, um, and in the source code of the page, we're sort of going a, a little bit away from the link building topic, but I think this is important enough to mention. Um, I'll zoom in on this a little bit so you can see. <coughs> Here you can see the uh, uh, language mapping URLs here. So rel, alternate, hreflang, and then different languages. So for example, de dash uh, de means uh, um, basically Deutsch and Deutschland for German languages. Here we've got English, Great Britain. And that actually specifies which type of which URL should be served to Google, or well, not served to Google. Which URL should be served to users searching for that particular uh, language page? What this means is basically 
that if you want your UK page rank to to rank in the UK and you want your uh, Canada page to rank in Canada and so forth, um, you can tell Google um, through this uh, uh, markup here, which is really handy. Cool. Have we got any more questions in the forum? Let's see. Um, nope. Okay. Shall we go to the moderator? If I can find the page again. All right. Zeno, we've answered. <clears throat> what are the best SEO tools? Raven tools, SEMOs, Ahrefs, etc. Yes, those. <laughs> Raven tools, SEMOs, Ahrefs. Um, I also quite like uh, Majestic SEO. It's one of my uh, favorites. Um, in particular, because uh, it gives you the link growth uh, metrics, which is quite nice. It's something that. Uh, oh, I forgot two very important uh, SEO tools. Um, Bing Webmasters Tools and Google Webmasters Tools. I think people it people ignore those too too often. Um, they're probably the most reliable and the most significant tools uh, because they're directly associated with the search engine itself. Um, and there's plenty of uh, plenty of good things uh, you can do with them, and, and plenty of useful data you can extract out of it. Um, I might just uh, have, are you familiar with um, Majestic? Most of you in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's have a look. Uh, I'll I'll just sh share my screen again. 